Let's talk about some undrafted free agents. And let's see what everyone else is saying about the Dolphins draft. What is up, Finn fans? I was going to make this video and release it yesterday. For you guys, that's Sunday. For the Patreons and members, you might be watching this Sunday night. Because, again, you guys see it as soon as it goes up. Uh, but I took Sunday to take a break and breathe. Because Thursday, Friday, Saturday, wow, <laughs> having a baby and doing this and only getting four hours of sleep, I probably still look like garbage, but hey, what are you going to do? So in today's video, we're going. I'm going to talk about the undrafted free agents we got. We only got four, and I'll explain why. I'm going to take a look at everyone else's grade for the Miami Dolphins draft, because some people agreed, some people disagreed with my B plus A um, grade. And there's another analytic that popped up that made me think. So we're going to talk about that today. But again, like usual, I got to shout out a bunch of people, patchvibes.com. I say it all the time. If you haven't yet, just go check it out. If you like what you see, you want to grab something, use the promo code DDW. You get yourself 20% off. Also, Miami Sports Music, again, another great YouTube channel and website. They're trying to do all things Miami sports. Solo D is a part of it. I'm a part of it. TD is a part of it. Go check it out. I got some new Patreon, Simon uh, Peterson. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon, brother. And I got a new member, Wilson Robinson. Uh, Will William Robinson. Almost messed your name up. Thank you so much for joining. So let's jump into this mama jamma. First thing I want to talk about, and I thought this was extremely interesting. Next Gen Stats came out and looked at the most athletic draft class, right? of this past draft. So they looked at all of the draft picks for each team and they came up with the most athletic. And lo and behold, I'll pop it up. Who is number one? The Miami Dolphins. And it makes a lot of sense. We bring in uh, Jalen Waddell. We bring in Jalen Phillips, very athletic players. We bring in um, Javon Holland, another very athletic player. Even though I wanted an offensive lineman there, Long, the tight end we brought in, very athletic player. All of these guys are athletic. And it made me think, and I went back and I watched. If you haven't yet, go watch Brian Flores and Chris Greer's post-draft press conference and all of their press conference throughout the, the draft. They talked about how bringing in Jalen Waddell, you have Jalen Waddell, you have Will Fuller, Imagine just having them go on go routes or streaks or whatever kind of route. The defense has to respect them. Even throw Jakeem Grant out there. Imagine there's a formation with Jakeem Grant, um, Jalen Waddell, and Will Fuller. You have to respect their speed and you have to come off. You can't press them. You can't jam them at the line of scrimmage. And that helps out Tua because for one, these receivers are going to get open right away and he doesn't have to wait for them to get off these jams. And two, that opens up the run game. And Brian Flores even talked about it. Having the defense have to be a few, you know, few feet, few yards, whatever, back off of these players really opens up the run game because all of a sudden you got a little bit of a cushion. You can get that, you get that run game going. So again, the most athletic draft was the Miami Dolphins. And very, very happy about that. Let's talk about the undrafted free agents we picked up. We only picked up four. Normally, you pick up like nine or, you know, a good amount. We only picked up four for multiple reasons. One, cap space. They didn't have as much, and that's probably the same reason why they didn't go crazy in free agency. This free agency period, this cap space period, all of this is different because there is no money because of last year. So you'll notice that there's a good amount of teams that just didn't go crazy in undrafted free agency. So the Dolphins didn't go crazy for that reason. Also for the roster. The Dolphins have a lot of players on their roster right now. And if the Dolphins were to add maybe like two or three more undrafted free agents, they'd have to cut some vets. And if you weigh it, you kind of want you know the, vet, the vets there versus – undrafted free agents that probably won't make the roster right and i'll talk about them right now first they picked up robert jones guard out of middle tennessee state he's six foot four 319 two-year starter never missed a game he's going to be transferring from tackle to guard um he's not very athletic got a wide frame he's going to have a little bit of trouble um with those speedy pass rushers in the middle 
and getting his motion going and getting his movements going. He has to really work on his hands and his feet. Again, that's why he went undrafted. Then you have uh, Jaitlin Askew, who's a special teamer out of Georgia Tech, uh, 5'11", 185. He essentially is a, he was a gunner, uh, Georgia Tech, 32 total tackles, uh, his time there. Just a special teamer they brought in. You have Carl Tucker, who's a tight end slash fullback out of Alabama. Didn't play with two of them. Six foot two, 248. He did five years at North Carolina. Then he graduated. Then he joined Alabama. He had 36 receptions, 549 yards, 15.3 yards on average, and four touchdowns last year. And then you have Jerome Johnson, defensive tackle out of Indiana, um, six foot three, 304 pounds. He was a second team all Big Ten uh, last year, big run stopper. He's a feast and f- or famine type, right? He's either going to make a lot of big plays or he's just going to keep getting knocked back. Um, he's a three technique, a defensive tackle. So he's that big boy, those nose tackles that are in the middle. He's got a high motor. His 2020 stats are 18 tackles, four and a half for a loss, and four um, sacks. Again, he is the type of guy who, he, when he's on, he's on. But a lot of times he kind of gets ping-ponged um, off of blockers. So there's a reason these four guys were undrafted. But, you know, we'll see if they make the roster. And, again, that's where I talked about the vets versus the undrafted free agents. These vets probably are, have a little bit more upside than these undrafted free agents. Not saying undrafted free agents won't make the team or can't be good. You know, I can name a ton of undrafted free agents that ended up being really good. Hell, and even ended up being Hall of Famers. We got Preston Williams on our team right now as undrafted free agent. But these guys, it seems like I'll be surprised if any if these four guys make the team. I think it's more just camp body and seeing, hey, what can you guys do? Right now, I think the Dolphins have like six tight ends on the team. So Carl Tucker's probably going to be more of a fullback. So, again, those are the undrafted free agents we brought in. Just four. And, again, it was limited because of cap space and because of roster space. Those are the reasons we went after the four versus going after, like, last year. We got, like, I think, like, nine. We got a, a good chunk. Uh, and most of them, well, not most of them, but some of them are still on the um, team, like Render. You know, a few of them are still on the team. So those are the undrafted free agents. Now what I want to do is I want to look at – what other people were saying about our draft, right? Gave them a day, kind of process things, um, see how they felt about things. And when you look at what the other people gave the Miami Dolphins, majority, I would even say all but one, really high on the Miami Dolphins. Now, I have this chart here for the draft grades, and then I have some articles where they went a little bit more in-depth and we could talk about that. But you look at this chart, and they and na- nationwide, the Dolphins had in in their in like these people's and you'll see who they are um, opinions had the fifth best draft. Um, NFL.com gave them an A. The Draft Network gave them an A. Uh, NBC Sports gave them an A plus. PFN gave them a B plus. Sports News gave them an A. Cleveland.com A. The Ringer A. TD Wire A minus. Uh, PFF gave them a B plus. US Today gave them a B. ESPN gave them an A. New York Post gave them an A plus. Sports Illustrated gave them an A minus. The Score gave them an A. Fan Side gave them an A. The Washington Post gave them a B. The Draft Wire gave them a B minus. And NBC Sports Edge gave them a C plus. And their overall grade of a 3.64 is a B plus. That C plus, if they didn't give it a C plus from NBC Sports Edge, they probably would have been top three because that really shot their grade down a little bit. But majority of the people and majority of the media and the experts and stuff really liked what the Dolphins did. Really liked it. So the first one I'm going to look at is New York Post, right? They gave the Dolphins an A+. Um, and they said, Waddle brings game-breaking speed to the offense, reunited with former quarterback Tua Tungavailoa and special teams. When you have the when you have four top 42 picks, you can swing for the fences with Phillips. Three concussion, but big rush ability, a big pass rush ability. Four players with first-round grades. That is the reason I gave them the grade I gave them is because 
the the four players we took in you know Jalen Waddle, Jalen Phillips, Javon Holland, and um, uh, Eckenberg. Really, yeah, those are all first round p- uh, picks. A lot of people had them going in the first round, and the Dolphins got two of them in the second round. And then this is from um, NBC Sports. Uh, he says Alabama wideout Jalen Waddle had star has star potential and should be instant chemistry with his former quarterback Tua leading the Dolphins offense. Taking edge rusher Jalen Phillips at 18, uh, 18 overall in the first round was a little risky given his injury history, but has special pass rush talent that was arguably Miami's biggest need entering the draft. Yeah, how many times did I tell you guys that? Uh, second round pick Javon Holland um, and Liam Eckenberg were excellent choices too. Overall, the Dolphins absolutely dominated the draft and used their abundance of early round picks to select select a couple of players with high, very high upside. And yeah, I know we missed out. And I, you know, again, I read a bunch of your comments and I and I interact with you guys because I want to know how you guys are feeling and you know what's going on and especially if you're really down on what the Dolphins did I want to know why tell me talk to me what's going on why do you feel that way and you know talking to you guys really opened up my mind that a lot of you guys aren't upset with who we took it's a lot of who we passed up some guys think we we missed um holes that should have been filled which I kind of disagree with you know the only holes that we missed were running back and center and I think that the Dolphins just really like Miles Gaskin and I think they, they're going to move maybe Jesse Davis Dieter or someone else I think they have a plan but other than that they didn't they filled all the holes that they really needed to but I totally get where you guys are coming from with the aspect of you know we passed on um, Panay Sewell to take Jalen Waddle. now Jalen Waddle, I will I will bet anything that he would not have been there at 12. So to say we should have stayed at 12, no. And even some of you guys who are saying, well, we shouldn't have drafted out, you know, drafted out of three and stayed there and took um pits. I see where you're coming from there too, but the amount of draft capital we got for the future to consistently keep doing this is important. You know, we added four first round potential um players, right? In 2023, we can do it again with two first-round picks. We can consistently add these top, top-notch, top-tier talent players consistently, and that's what the Dolphins did. They moved from you know three to twelve back to six to still get a top ten talent because again, Waddle's not going to be there at twelve. So I totally, again, I totally understand where you guys are coming from because when they missed out on um, Javante Williams, when they missed out on Humphreys, when they missed out on. Um, Miners, I was very upset. I'm like, especially Miners. I'm like, you take a tight end? When mine, like, I totally get where you guys are coming from. But then when you take a step back and look at who they actually got, it was very, very smart. And you can see what the Dolphins are actually doing there. This one, they gave the Dolphins an A minus. This is PFN. And they said the Miami Dolphins made an incredibly strong start to the 2020 NFL draft, giving them a great basis for their grade. However, their inability to get a running back severely hampers their final grade. Um, addressing the offensive line gives the Dolphins options in terms of a configuration of their line heading into 2020. So they gave them an A minus because they didn't really, you know, get the running back. So that severely hampered their grade, which I agree. J- missing on Javante Williams, I don't know if they thought, hey, he's going to still be there when we're, re- you know, when we're, we're good, good to go and to get him. But I agree, and then. The last one I'm going to read, because I'm pretty sure you guys don't want me to read all of them, is from the Washington Post because it was a B. And I want, you know, here's what they say about a B. There was little doubt that the Dolphins would take wide receiver at number six, but did they take the right one by choosing Jalen Waddle over Devontae Smith? Miami has five of the draft's first 81 selections and plenty of promise as one would expect. With Waddle, pass rusher Jalen Phillips, Javon Holland, Liam Eckenberg, and Hunter Long, one possible qu- uh, quibble quibble <laughs> was the decision to make Holland the first safety drafted over Trevon Morig. And again, that's where it comes into we don't know what their board was. We didn't know we don't know what their plan was. I think that in their mind they did they killed it. And I think that's why you see a lot of A's, A pluses, A, A pluses, A, and then a little B, few B's in there. And those B's 
are understandable. I gave them a B plus because of they killed it, but you missed the little pieces here and there. You kind of the the players you got are fantastic. They have great upside, but there's that little bit of something could go wrong, and all of a sudden everything could collapse. And that's why I gave them a B plus slash A. That's why certain other people gave them B, B pluses. Now like C's and F's and all that that I'm seeing, that's just ridiculous because the talent that they picked up is just really, really, really good. The upside is there. It's just the little things, right? And again, missing on big pieces that could have been there. Like I said, they tried to get up and get Najee. Couldn't it didn't work out, and I bet you because the you know the team that was in front of the Steelers probably wanted a ransom of firsts and seconds and stuff, and the Dolphins were like, no, we'll give you you know they moved up to forty two and they were like we'll just give you a third next year. The team was like, all right, fine. And they got rid of their fifth and got a fourth next year, probably for the same reason why they only took four and drafted free agents. They don't have room nor money, so they were like, nah, there's no one here really in the fifth that we want. Let's you know. Pick up some more. Two, let's pick up the two sevenths and see what we got there. But, you know, I really like what they did with the draft. Now, again, and I said this in the beginning of my draft grade video, you cannot really assess a draft until three years later. That's why on Wednesday I'm doing – we're going to go back to 2018 and look at that draft and see how the Dolphins did. Um, so this is more of – the potential they got, where they got it, and what they could have got. You know, there's a lot of variables that go into my grades. That's why I said like the 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 injuries kind of nicked the the grades for the first two picks, but the fact that they got the the second round picks where they got them when they had first round potential is why their grade went up. You know, I had criteria, but be sure to comment below. What do you guys think of? The national medias and these experts and even NFL.com experts and, you know, Casserly, who is a multi-time Super Bowl champion at GM, saying the Dolphins absolutely killed it. Like, everyone is saying the Dolphins did fantastic, which is weird. We are not used to the Dolphins being so heavily praised in the, in the spotlight. Be sure to comment below. What do you think of that? What do you think of the four undrafted free agents that they pick up? And what do you think of the Dolphins having the most most athletic draft? Be sure to comment below. Comment of the day, um, like I said, was the draft grades and I, and and me, you know, addressing your guys' disappointments and stuff and talking about it. Next video, I promise you, I'm going to pick one of your guys' comments of the day. Um, so keep commenting below because I love reading them. I absolutely love reading them. Um, but like I said. Wednesday, we're going to look back at 2018 and and see, was that draft really, how was that draft? I'll look at what the grade was, and then I'll see if the grade held up. But other than that, guys, I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I hope you have a fantastic Monday, whether you're at work or anything watching this. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I will see you guys Wednesday, unless news breaks. You guys know if news breaks, a trade happens, this or that, you're getting a breaking news video from me. But like usual, guys, stay classy. Fins up.